Hi guys, welcome to Pigs Laffer. So today's video is about how to quickly set up a scene like this using Cinema 4D, right? It's actually a quick tip on setting something up like this and you can actually use that same trick um, probably somewhere else in Cinema 4D to do other interesting stuff. Let's quickly get into Cinema 4D and see how you use that trick. It's quite a quick one to set up something like this in Cinema 4D. So let's play the video again and actually make it big. And hit play. So this is the video. And you can see it's some sort of spheres connected by lines, right? So let's actually get into Cinema 4D and see how we will do this. So this is actually a quick um, preview render I actually did to see how the whole thing flows, right? And I forgot to mention the um, the page that I saw this video is called Mesmerized, right? On Pinterest. So yeah, this is the um, scene like I quickly set up to see how the whole thing flows and you can see that splines are tracking the object that's moving and when it gets closer to any of this here, it scales up. So like, let's actually quickly see how we'll do this trick. So I have a new scene here. So let's go ahead and create our spline first. So I'll come into my splines and I'll create a helix, right? I'll come into its attributes and set the start radius to zero and the end radius to zero. So for us to get a straight line, we can use any other straight line. If you want, you can draw it by yourself, right? But what's important is that we actually wish the um, Z axis was facing the other way, the opposite, not this way. So you let's go ahead and show the reason why. So now what I'll do is that I right click on the helix, come to my um, an, uh, animation tags, and I'll add a target tag to our helix, right? So we want it to target an object. So let's create some sort of um, a sphere, make it very small, maybe three uh, centimeters, but in the radius. And now let's select the target tag. The object we want our helix to target is the sphere. So let's drag and drop in the sphere. And now if you select the sphere and move it, you can see. Our, let's actually first of all come to filters. I don't like the word play, it's a distract. So you can see if I move our sphere, wherever I move it, our helix is trying sort of moving, basically trying to target it, but it's doing it in the opposite direction. So like if you are drawing your spline yourself, you can actually make it face the Z direction. But in, the, in our case, this might not be necessary because you can actually work with it. But from, if you want it to face the object, you can select the helix and come to coordinate and set the z position to minus one and i can see our helix is now facing out the ta directly targeting our sphere so now if i move the sphere no matter where um you can see it's targeting it but there's an issue when the sphere gets further right the spline can't extend or can can stretch to fit where the sphere like wherever the sphere goes right so that's where our problem is but how do we solve that it's quite simple. So let's come into our deformers and I'll look for a shrink wrap deformer. I'll make it a child of the helix. Select the shrink wrap deformer and come to its attributes, the object tab. Let's change the mode from um, along uh, normals to target at actually source axis, right? And now I think it should be target axis rather. And then let's drag in our sphere not working then probably source axis yeah source axis so now you can see we change our mood to source axis and now we're dragging the sphere now the helix is stretching to fit our um, sphere no matter how further we stretch it the helix will stretch to fit it now with the helix let me do something because it's a helix there's a lot of subspecies so i'll set it to even three something small so now we can see this is basically the basis for the whole um, video like that was shown. So for us to get several splines, but definitely we have to clone it. So to do that, I'll actually come into my go graph. I'll create a, a matrix, right, which we are going to clone our splines on. I'll select the matrix and now change it to something like a radial. And let's make it open it up a bit and increase the number of matrix. Right, so this this will be what we will clone our um, splines on, and the spheres as well, the spheres around the splines. So now let's go ahead and create a new sphere. Or oh, actually, for now, let's put on the sphere. Come into our object and create a cloner. Right, drag in our helix and select the cloner. Change the mode from grid. In fact. We can leave it here for now to see what's happening. So because we are using cloner, the target tag 
will not be necessary. So let's delete the target tag. But we have to use another target object here, which is the target effector. So if I select the colon and I come to my effectors and I choose target effector, you can see we have our target effector. And now the object we want to track is the sphere again, the same sphere that our um, initial target tag was using. So I'm dragging the sphere into our tag, I mean, not the selection, but the target object space here. And I can see all our splines are targeting the sphere. And I've no matter how far I move our sphere, the spline stretch to fit wherever I move the sphere. And that's what we want, right? So we can actually select the cloner change it, the mode from grid object and the object you want to clone on is the matrix right and i can see we have some radial lines working and if i select the sphere once again and move it you can see we have some interesting radial lines we can actually even make select the matrix and come to random add a bit of um say noise to this animation and probably is the this thing and if we hit play you can see you have disconnected lines and it can use do interesting stuff but now let's go back to what we're trying to achieve so now let's delete the random and also the matrix let's change it from radial to object and let's create a normal cube i'll probably make it a bit longer on the y so i'll make it maybe 300 and now let's add some segments to the cube. So I'll add maybe four here, four here, and four on the X, four on the Z, and five probably on the Y. Something like this will be fine. Select the matrix and let's drag in the cube to the object tab. And now let's change the distribution of the matrix from surface to vertex. So you can see every vertex of the cube has a matrix. So now let's go ahead and hide the cube. Now you can see our splines have inherited all the matrices. You can even hide the matrices. And I can see our line are working. So if I select the sphere once again and move it, you can see it's connected. So all we have to do now is to add our spheres. So that one will also have its own clone. So I'll create a clone object once again, create a sphere and make the sphere probably um, size of six, make it a child of the cloner. Select the cloner and change the mode of grid to object and the object you want to clone on once again is the matrix so you can see every um, sphere at the tip of our spline so that's basically the whole idea right so now what else how do we get our like whenever this ball gets closer to one um, our spheres it scales up it's basically using the vector so with our spheres clone selected i'll come into my effectors and i'll use plane vector Select, um, come into the attributes of the plane effector, make sure position is unchecked, and check rotation. And now with the rotation, I'll use uniform scale, and I'll scale it to probably, let's see, five, four. I think four will be fine. Or even if you want to go crazy, can go even five or whatever. But now select this planar, come to its field tab, and I'll change it, the, the field, let's use a spherical field. Right. And now drag the sphere careful and make it a child of the target sphere, the sphere that um, like our splines are targeting. And now select the sphere, make sure the coordinates are reset to zero. Right. And now if I select the sphere itself, I can hide the, sphere, uh, the field now because everything is fine. So if I se select the target sphere and move it. You can see whenever I get close to our spheres, it scales up. So that's basically how to set up something like this. From here going, just playing around with it to get your um, spline. You can even move it outside, but in this case, we want it to stay inside. So when it gets here, then it scales up, right? So basically, this is something I discovered and I feel like it will be interesting to um, see how we've done in smart body and it's quite simple to achieve it using this trick right hope this video was useful and see you in the next one thank you for watching